Hello, my name is Matt. This is Anthony. That's Emily. That's Michael. And this is Ian. And we are Friendly Fire TV. And we are about to play Blades in the Dark. Week five. Four. Week four. Four. How's everyone? Yeah, four. How's everyone doing? It was like half thumbs up, right? I don't know if you could tell, but I sighed, so... I, I, I... Yeah, tell me about your sigh. How are you, Ian? I'm okay. You know, busy day. I finished The Walking Dead, so I'm caught up now last night, so... Nice. Well done. Welcome. Welcome yeah. to... Welcome to the, the Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo Club. To the wait. <laughs> yep. Yeah. To Disappointment City. Population oh, of oh, come everyone. On. I'm not. I'm not in Disappointment City. I, I won't get into it, don't worry. <laughs> I've been saying for a while, someone needs to die, so... Yeah. In the interest of keeping this a spoiler-free zone. <laughs> what else have you been doing, Ian? Uh, that's... I mean, I've been just hanging out, you know. I've been doing drawing things like normal. Cool. Um, I, I had something. Apparently, I don't have something now, so... Okay. That's it. Very cool. Michael, how are you? I'm okay. I got home from work literally like 20 minutes before all of us get on to do pre-show stuff. And so I, on my way home from work, got some delicious tacos, quickly put them in my mouth, and it was good. Did you go to Don Pedro's? Yes. Senor. They're good. They got. We got a good taco place up here. Yeah, we do. Other than that, I've been. Let's see, I played some Overwatch this week or yesterday. Okay. That was good. Nice. <laughs> I, I really like McCree. He's real fun to play. He's my dude. I also. It's see, high I played some, noon. I played some Doom. Some, some the new Doom game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty fun to. To shoot some freaking demons in the face. Yeah, I hear that it's a very interesting <laughs> game. I hear that it stays relatively true to the the, yeah. the series and, and sort of goes to that old school shooter style, which is cool. Yeah, and oh, the soundtrack. Oh my gosh, the soundtrack. Oh, every time it gets me. Just gets your blood pumping in the right ways that oh. you want oh. your blood to be pumping. In the right ways. I, I, I don't want to hear about demons. that. I don't no. Wanna... <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, wow. I don't you're wanna... you're I don't taking wanna... it the wrong way. You're taking it. This is your fault, Matt. You're I mean, taking this the wrong way. I mean, maybe you're right, but you also did just say you want your blood pumping in all the right ways. Yeah. The ways that you want it to be pumping when you're killing demons. It's good. Anthony, how are you <laughs> doing? I wasn't done. Okay, Mike. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Anthony. Just kidding. Good. Well, Mike just got my blood pumping. Ooh. You know? Ooh. All the ways um <laughs> all, the, all the ways you want your blood to be pumping when you're on blades in the dark overwatch is pretty pretty neat i've been yeah. looking forward to that and it's still fun uh it's a pretty pretty adorable game and the eternal master spoilers started mm. so i'm looking at the internet every couple hours to see what new goodies they're hiding in that yeah um what is your favorite card uh that has been spoiled for the eternal master set that's coming up my favorite card that's in the set, or my favorite card to see and then play with in the set. Yes. So, I like the card Sneak Attack a lot. Mm. I don't, I don't like need copies of it or anything. I have one in my cube, but that's really a fun card, uh, and I like to see it. That you know the other uh, reanimator spells, but uh, I'm excited to maybe play with like a Nimble Mongoose deck. That was <laughs> sweet. Yeah, I love that card. Um, like the new art on a lot of the stuff. It's pretty exciting, generally. I don't know how much I get to play, but anything should be interesting. It looks like a pretty powerful cube-like set, which I tend to enjoy. So, Very cool. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Uh, Emily, how are you? I'm pretty good. I don't have food poisoning anymore, Hooray! which and is a delight. And you have um, a promotion. I have a promotion. I was promoted today to an elite task force of people who tell the government to not be dinguses. Nice. So nice. that's basically my job. Get them. This is it's a different, different task force than the Avengers, though. Very, 
very different on task public record. Force. Yes, yes, that that you know of. Um, but yeah, so quite quite a bit of stress and uh, mental fatigue is going on, but it'll get better. So that's that's good. It is it's good to be back and to get to hang out with Lyric again because I didn't get to hang out with her last week. So yeah, neither did most of us. I know she had a, she had an oopsie in yeah. the sewers. So yeah, I'm very curious to hear more about what exactly happened there. Uh, as for myself, uh, I have also been playing a lot of Overwatch, and um, Roadhog is the best, and that is indisputable. So uh, moving on from that, uh, Eternal Masters is also cool. Eternal Masters, by the way, is a supplemental product coming out for the the card game Magic: The Gathering. It's a game that Anthony and I uh, love a lot, and some others in the call uh, have played before, which is cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, yeah. well, I wasn't talking about Emily. Oh, she refuses to play it with me. Uh, you bet oh, you want that. That. <laughs> Whoa, I, I didn't say that. I, did, I didn't say that. Whoa. I, I like the public shame um, approach. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I really am looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a cool limited environment. Uh, cause like Anthony said, it's kind of like cube drafts, but with real cards. Um, and not on Magic Online's interface, so sweet. Um, and I just, I really hope that I can pick up some cool cards from it. Like, um, I'd be really hyped if I got, like, a Divining Top, or a Jace the Mind Sculptor, or a Calm uh, Storm. Sweet. Just kidding. That uh, plays one for still <laughs> dumb as hell. Dragon. I do not want that one. Jace, Jace is still dumb as Perfect. hell. Nah, he's Speaking not dumb. Of... Come on. He's, he's, he's the better than all. True. Dak Faden might be. Oh, true. That's good. Yeah, Dak Faden's in there, cool, in, in there too. Exile really cool. everything but your hand. How is that not broken? Well, and put your hand on in your library. So you still have like seven turns if you have seven cards. So. Exile everything I mean, but your hand. And yeah. I, I, I played when he was in standard. You didn't spend a whole lot of time ultimating. You usually didn't get that. They didn't get that far. No. <laughs> well, no just, everyone murders you know, him. His, well, no, because he murders everyone. He's better than you all. You brainstorm for three turns for free, and then suddenly you're fate sealing them, and they never get to draw a card again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. You have 18 lands? Sure. Yeah, you can draw another one. I'll just put that right back on top. <laughs> Seems yeah, good. It's sick. <laughs> um, and the first time I played Jace the Mind Sculptor in a draft on Magic Online, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I was, uh, I was scrying one the whole time. It's... It looks complicated because there's four options. Well, there's five options you could, technically. You because... could put the whole thing on a flowchart. Yeah, like and just it's just he's an, it leaves like like a an if then statement on a magic card. Oh, totally. Um, and but... and at the end you win. But like so, scrying one is like the the thing you're not supposed to do. Like of all the options you you could do, because you the fate seal targets a player, so you can target yourself and scry one. And. Yeah. That's what I was doing. I was like, I guess yeah, I scry it seems one. Good, I don't right? want to discard cards or put. You, you come know, from put a two world of scrying and... one. This is before I know. scrying them one was better. Yeah, because <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. It hurts. Bad. <laughs> also... Well, anyway, we will we will get off the topic of magic, even though uh, my jimmies are pretty wrestled about it and about Overwatch, and we might play some Overwatch after this uh, tonight. So you might get to see some uh, some Roadhog gameplay, which I know you're all just craving Just. uh yeah so um mike how about you go ahead and get us started where did we leave off we left off you are in one of the many sword schools that is run by the red sashes and you're trying to bust into their vault and steal their loot and you guys let's see you successfully picked the lock at the end of the last session Mm -hmm. While at the same time, uh, an unknown number of red sashes was coming down the stairs behind you and was all like, hey, is that blood on yes, the ground? Yes, those were the exact words they said. And then we cut, because we love cliffhangers here on Friendly Fire TV. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and also, and, and that's not all of us, too, because um, Lyric, she, right. she yeah. had a different was, scenario. So what happened to Lyric? I was just going to get there. Uh, Lyric passed out at the beginning of the session, and there was an argument about whether or not Matt's ghost friend should possess her or not, <laughs> temporarily, you know? And we decided, Thanks for the assist. We decided that was not okay, 
and that <laughs> potentially fatal <laughs> inflicts <laughs> trauma <laughs> upon me and kill me on my week off. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. I mean, That's Matt, what you get. Matt's familiar with characters dying when you're not there, so I feel yeah. like. Yeah, Did that happen okay. to you? Happened. Oh yeah, totally that's, that's happened, to happened to me. Happened to him. One of my first role playing games. Hashtag game, it could happen to you. Yeah, one of my first role playing game experiences. I was playing online with a group of people, and I was gone for one session, and my character uh, got smushed by a a giant. <laughs> they couldn't just like send you to the end or something. They had to kill you. Yeah. That's rude. Wow. Yeah, I thought, they were essentially like, thrones. let's send him in first. Go on. No, there's there's definitely more to the story. Um, and, and it doesn't it doesn't seem like it was a well, let's just kill off this guy. But like, yeah, I didn't play with was... him again after that. <laughs> I was like, oh, my character's dead. Okay, I guess. All right, see ya. Hey. <laughs> not because i was like even particularly like concerned about my character but because like i'd only played a couple sessions and they just killed my character immediately so i was like ah i don't need it so <laughs> yeah and we ultimately decided that possessing a dead body was better than Correct. possessing a friend that's some so smart we did, thinking we did that and the dead body uh escorted lyric back to your guys's hideout and so that's where we're going to start tonight uh lyric you wake up and you, for a minute, don't know where you are, and you start to look around and take in your surroundings, and uh, <clears throat> you see uh, your guys' hideout. You guys don't have quarters yet, but you do see your, your hideout. Uh, have we got a description about what the inside of your guys' hideout looks like yet? It's an abandoned, uh, abandoned uh, tavern that we, mainly Silas, took over. Um, from someone who was planning on shutting down anyway, really, but like was competition for an, another local tavern that we were friends with. So it's it's probably a poorly stocked um, tavern that has like maybe a back room for gambling. Um, well, it definitely has that. Let's just say it definitely has like a, a back room for gambling, um, and and not really a whole lot else as far as I can think of. Does anyone else have any input about what they might think our lair is? I imagine like faded paint, you know, bar stools, some chairs in the corners, you know. I think I think we probably cleaned it up a bit, but it's not too clean. You know, it's a little shabby, but yep. I'd say you probably you wake up on maybe there's like a half moth eaten sofa somewhere in the back corner somewhere. Uh, it's all dirty and cloth falling off. And you wake up there and it takes you a few minutes to get your bearings and realize where you are, you know. It seems familiar. You see dusty glasses on the bar, and uh, you know where you are. You're in your hideout, and mm -hmm. then you look to your left, and uh, you see the dead body of a red sash just <laughs> sitting there, face down on the floor. And let's see. I think Willie can make himself visible if he chooses. Would you agree, Matt? Yes. Yes. So Willie is not currently in the body still, or is he? He has he has abandoned the the body, and the first thing you see is the dead body, and then it kind of Willie kind of just fades into view. At first, you don't really even notice it, but uh, he he kind of like fades in, and then you see him, and uh, he's kind of like just standing over you awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> As as ghosts do. Yeah. <laughs> so awkward. So so Willie looks down. Um, and by the way, before I say this stream, uh, if you could just let us know how the sound quality is. We were having some sound issues just prior to the start, and I just want to make sure that we're all squared away. So please let me know before we begin yeah. uh, any further. But um, yeah, Willie just like looks down at Lyric and and just says, "Well, took you long enough. You've been asleep a while." I kind of, you know, rub my eyes, realize that I'm still covered in shit, shake off my arm, sit up, <laughs> look around. I don't know if, um, is it traumatizing at all for me to be in the presence of Willie at this point? Is there anything I need to do about that? Or are we, are we cool? I'd say that that would depend on how forward Oscar has been about Willie. And mm -hmm. what the deal is with that? Yeah, so uh, Lyric probably does not know immediately that I have 
a ghost friend uh, because the the impression mm -hmm. that most people get when they're around Oscar for a while um, is that uh, he's just crazy. He's like the crazy old guy talking to himself when in reality he's talking to uh, uh, Willie, um, his mm -hmm. ghost friend. So um, Lyric doesn't know right away that I have a ghost friend. And in fact, that was just kind of revealed to the rest of the group um, <laughs> in the sewers. All right. Yeah. So, since she doesn't really know about Willie, she's gonna have to be something. So, <coughs> close sorry. With the spirit or demon is a harrowing experience. By a default, mm. the standard effect is to either paralyze a person with fear or panic them into fleeing from its presence. A PC can choose to roll to resist the effect. Characters with lots of exposure to spirits, such as whispers, which is you, rail tracks, and occult weirdos become less susceptible and only face fear or panic from exceptionally powerful entities. Okay. So is there is there a role that I should make like to see how well I handle the situation? Since since you're a whisperer, I don't think that Willie is of a level high enough to really merit you freaking out a whole lot. No, and, and he's either. also he's also not coming across like confrontationally weirdly you know right. he's just like hey <laughs> like what's up yeah so i don't really think that uh this merits anything okay. from you because you're a whisperer if you were not a whisperer then there would definitely be something but mm -hmm. i'd say you there's not going to be any involuntary responses from you uh okay. determined by the game mechanics that how you respond is going to be up to you and your character. Right. I would say that probably just the, as soon as I can kind of finally see and my vision clears up a little bit, like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty visibly shaken up, which isn't something that happens to Lyric all that, all that often. She's seen a lot of weird stuff, but um, for, for some, some context, the reason why Lyric passed out ostensibly is because the last time that she attempted to use her tempest powers was when she was on her last voyage uh, as a leviathan hunter and tried to intervene to save her crew as their ship was destroyed by a leviathan so <laughs> she's she's a little shaken up from that and um has also had some weird spirit encounters at sea so at first she's she's kind of just frozen doing her best to be on her guard but of course she's not really in a great position so she's just kind of speechless at first okay willie willie looks at lyric and says i'm not going to hurt you and neither is he and he kind of like well, points to the dead body <laughs> he's not sleeping that's a that's a relief, and hey, he doesn't smell a lot worse than me right now, so. Yeah, you don't smell very good. Yeah, that's that's what I keep hearing. So uh, I don't exactly remember what happened. Oh, well, uh, you and the boys went to the the sewer of the Red Sash place, and uh, uh, you pass out. I don't huh. know. I was busy trying to help with this. His this guy. Any points to the red sash? He's like this guy's friend. I was trying to, you know, choky choky, but uh, no such luck. So I don't really know what happened. I just turned around and you were uh, sploosh, right in the water. Oh, damn! My first job that I attempt on land in what fifteen years, and this is how it goes. Fantastic. Yeah, I, guess, I guess when you when you have your sea legs for too long, uh, getting your land legs doesn't come naturally maybe i don't know my legs are kind of floaty <laughs> so he's yeah, like he like he, like he doesn't like fly away or like do anything crazy but he just kind of like picks up both his feet at the same time like looking at them <laughs> but like not moving <laughs> in height previously yeah. he, he is like standing though but then he just kind of like, shows that he doesn't really have to <laughs> he's like you know yeah, like, yeah. okay yeah. so <laughs> we cut back at that point to the rest of y'all, I think. And, let's see, I think... How many do we want to have here? I don't know, Mike. 
Maybe just one. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> zero. Just one guy. 70. They all just disappear. Seventy guys. I think there's six. But they're all pacifists. Six. We're gonna have six guys. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you guys here, let's say we have Oscar and Wakasis at the vault door, and Silas went into the training room, correct? Was it, Well, Wakasis was uh, off a I little like bit. I like between the two. Yeah. So, Wakasis. Yeah. I okay. was. He has the documents. Yes. He does. <laughs> if you look back at my beautiful drawing that I made in Roll 20, because mm. I'm a, a great mm. artist. Truly. Okay, I see that you guys have kind of marked where you are. So Wakasis is going to be seen first by the six guys. So they they walk down the right side here. Okay. Where I just pinged. They walk down that side of the stairs. And uh, you can see five of them look like they're dressed pretty similarly to everyone else that you've been seeing. Mm -hmm. One of them in the middle of the group, though, Looks like he has uh, slightly higher quality clothing, and it's decorated a little more. So okay. maybe he has uh, uh, a different kind of sash that looks like uh, it's higher quality, and he has some pins and medals on his body, uh, and a much nicer looking sword on his side. He doesn't look as green. Right. He it's looks like he might be... Red. <laughs> at least more in charge than the rest of the guys, for sure. Okay. Um, would I would I know, being an old man who has experienced the city for a long time, would I know just by looking at him what rank he is? Uh, let's see. That would more depend on your knowledge of the red sashes, I think. Sure. I, I'm kind of basing that off the... the I have uh, worked with criminals in my investigative... Okay investigation past. Um, I don't know if there's a role I need to... I mean, there probably should be a role. Would that be something like survey? Maybe? Um, what yeah, what kind yeah. of role are you thinking that this would be? Hmm. You know what? It might even be... Well, does I mean, It might even be In consort your... because of like my previous connections. Okay. Um, consort with connections. Background. Okay. You're in the vault, aren't you? I'm in front of the vault. I just, oh, okay. I just sure. like they're also visible. Literally, yeah. Literally, all that happened is like the, the safe opened, and then there was like, "Who's up, blood?" Yeah, you haven't yeah. fully opened the safe, but you heard the the very satisfying thunk. Oh. you know when mm. when the final tumbler falls into place on the lock. Feels good. So, it yeah. feels so good. You know, kind of like in Skyrim when you're working on it and you get that last pin. Mm. You, know, you haven't opened it yet. Yeah, and then you open up the thing, and it turns out it was just a sweet roll in there. Yeah, I mean, the dungeon's been abandoned for, like, hundreds of years, and you find the perfectly good apple just in a chest. Yeah, sounds about nope. right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that Consort could work for this, you know? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Allow me to roll Consort. Uh, I'm not going to push myself or anything. Um, okay. I'm just going to go for it, and we'll give it a shot here. This is going to be, I think this... Controlled makes sense for this. Okay. Uh, A three. But you didn't you didn't quite make the rub. Mm -mm. So perhaps this is something that Oscar's seen in the past, and for a moment he like looks and he's like, "I remember that. I just don't know what it was. Like you know, kind of like when you know something but you don't know what it's called." Okay. Like... So um, you can't quite get a good enough view of him mm. right now to to really determine. You think that. Maybe if you step out a little more, you could get a better view. They haven't seen you yet. Mm. So if you step out and try to get a better view, then it would be a risky roll because there would be a chance that they would they would see you. But if you want to press this, then you can try again at risky. Anthony, were you going to say something? It's, it's just like a little trail of blood from the vault back to the training room, right? Yes. Um... Blood goes from the training room, doot, 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 past Wakasis, around the corner, and to the front of the vault. I was gonna find out if I could just do a like a flashback to rub some of the blood on my face. That's back. You can do that for free. Yeah. Sure. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. We have, a, we have a garage door opening. That's me, Casa. Rip, rip your users. 
<laughs> oh my god. Do you just want to say that before they got there, you had just taken some blood and rubbed it on your face? Yeah, just like, you know, down my nose and stuff. Yeah, that could be a stress-free flashback. That's that's nothing big, so sure. Sweet. I am injured. You have blood on your <laughs> face. And you are still wearing your red sash uniform. Oh yeah. All right. I believe, isn't aren't Oscar and Silas also wearing the red sash yeah. uniforms? You are, because yes. you guys were given some. Yeah. So, um, so I, I'm not going to like lean out and look to see them. I'm just gonna sit there in front of the safe, and I'm gonna like very calmly just take my stethoscope and put it back in in the thing as they're walking down the stairs, and my satchel as they're coming down the stairs, and maybe I'll pull out a document and look it over. Okay. I'm acting cool. How covered in blood are you, Oscar? I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Blood free. Yeah, I mean, there's maybe like a speck of blood somewhere, but I was not like, you know, I the only person I hit with a cane was Silas, and oops. Yeah. <laughs> the blood trail does. The blood trail does stop like, right in front of the safe. So. Mm -hmm. They so the the group of red sashes they walk down the stairs, and uh, one of one of the guys at the front is the one that says, "Is that blood?" and he kind of turns and sees Wakasis, and uh, so what are you doing when he when he looks at you, Wakasis? Like puzzling over the documents that I have, like turning them upside down, and, like looking at them, and <laughs> I don't look up at them. He just says, "What the hell happened here?" I do I hear this? Yeah. So everyone, Oscar, everyone who's around hears. Oscar, this. dude, can they see me yet? Uh, yeah. Probably. Okay. So Oscar takes the piece of paper and like he folds it very calmly and like puts it into his little little pouch and he's like, "It's a training room. You've got to be ready." He wasn't. He he who who is he? Uh, what? The man you're talking and... to. What what are you doing over there by the vault? I'm the inspector. And he the guy at the front he kind of turns around and looks at the at the guy that is more decorated, the guy that looks like he's in charge, yeah. and he has his left hand on his sword, he's got a stern look on his face, he's uh, he's not super tall, but he's probably about six foot, six foot That's tall. like a solid, like, eight, you know, eight to nine inches taller than Oscar, yeah? Yeah, he's taller than you, he's probably not as tall as Bacasis, or Silas, I think, because you guys are both taller than six foot, right? Like barely, yeah, sure. I'm I'm straight, like about six foot, six foot one. So, okay. so he's probably about your guys' height then. So he has some stubble. Looks like he hasn't shaved since this morning. He's got that five o'clock shadow going on, and uh, he kind of slowly walks down the stairs, and slowly is right up in front of Wakasis, and gives him a stern look, and kind of just holds out his hand expectantly. He doesn't say anything. He just holds out his hand. Does he hold out his hand like this or like like this? Like like this. Okay. Palm up. <laughs> <laughs> you just put your hand in his hand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just A tender I... caress. There's just like blood dripping <laughs> from my face. Like. <laughs> uh, he says, "That's not what I'm wanting." Do I hear him say this? Yeah. I say, that's very nice. What I he, want he, is... Go he ahead. looks at the documents. He kind of, like, points his eyes at the documents that you're holding with cases. Yeah, I, I interrupt still. Uh, and and when, when he says, that's not what I want, I say, what I want is for you and your, your uh, trainees to leave so I can open this vault and get uh, get done with my, uh, my inspection. That vault isn't being opened in until I see proper identification and You documents. don't have the authority, sir. I do. I don't think so. They wouldn't put a man in authority and have him bring trainees to the training room. That's a job for a messenger. I Pulls know that, like, sword. When he's saying this, I, like, put the documents in my other hand and then give him my the, uh, the hand that was holding the documents <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out his sword and puts it <laughs> right up against what case is his throat. I say, hold on a minute, let me go get the man inside. 
There's nobody in the vault. Not the vault, you dumbass. The training room. Now put your sword down, you shit. And I walk. You don't need to start, tell me what to do. I just start walking toward the training room door. Yeah, he holds out his sword and stops you from passing him. He says, "What are those documents?" What are what documents? The ones in your hands. I don't have any in my hands. They're in my pouch. Then let me see them. I pull out the document that I gave to the previous guy that says we have permission to go to the vault. Okay. He, he takes it. <laughs> he looks at it. Do you know, uh, I know you got a forged signature. Yes. Do you know what the name is of the forged signature? Uh, some, probably like, well, no, it's, it's mainly squiggles, right? Like, that's what I said last time. Right. Like, it's, it's right. mainly illegible squiggles. It's a sure. signature, right? So. <laughs> right. He looks at the documents, turns them over. We got a pretty good roll on these. I'm remembering perhaps, last Perhaps time. it looks like this. This is the signature. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> he examines the documents. He sheaths his sword. Holds the documents back up. Hands them to you. And he says, Alright, let's get this over with. I got places to be. Come on. And he gestures to go to the vault. To the vault? Uh, okay. I say, so you don't need to see the man inside the training room? What man inside the training room? This this document says nothing about a man inside a training room. Yeah, well, the man upstairs brought us to the training room, and he said, hey, the vault's down here, and if anyone has to talk to you about it, come talk to me. I know the man. I know the treasurer. All right, let's, let's talk to him. Okay, great. So I start walking toward the uh, training room, and perhaps I'm, like, humming a song. That sounds a lot like, Silas, please come out of there with your fist ready. <laughs> but like, you know, without words. Uh, and uh, He's following you. He's like right on your butt the entire time. I believe that. Am uh, I, do his men follow him? Right, like, are they on his heel or do they stay? Where do they go? Two of them follow him and uh, the other three stay out with you. Jesus. <sighs> So, I walk to the door, and, <laughs> okay. and, I, and I knock on the door. You hear... What, uh, Silas, you hear a knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Have you calmed down yet, Silas? I think we're still... I, no, no, no. And he does, <laughs> not, he does not open the door either, so... I say, I, I say to the man, like, I wait for a moment, like, probably a little bit too long. Like, I just wait too long because I'm, I'm patient about people coming to the door being an old man. And then I'm like, he probably didn't hear me. How about you, knock? And I, I like, step, I step out of the door. Okay, sure. <laughs> I step out of the way as he does that. It's his freaking place, man. He doesn't want to knock. <laughs> yeah, he, he just opens the door. Where are you standing, Silas? So I think what we see is the door slides open and Silas is, like, standing in the door frame, covered in blood. His <laughs> eyes are, like, slightly bloodshot, like, the after effects from the rage yeah. potion. And Mind, you guys didn't get rid of the dead bodies. No. Where would we? <laughs> we, were, like, we did, in the training room. Bloody corpses behind him. He splattered <laughs> in blood. And, and, like, there's just a grin on his face. And without a, like, I think, like, he just kind of goes, like, hello. And then he just punches <laughs> the dude. Okay. Like, not even, like, fully a punch, but, like, he's aiming to, like, take both his hands on the guy's head and, like, smash his head in between them. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Perfect. I like it. All right. So, uh, what is it that everyone wants to be doing during this uh, engagement? I think when I can, like, see them going towards the door, I'm, like, interesting the three guys with me and my papers, like, eh? Eh? <laughs> 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 and like you know, trying to dart back behind them as they as that you know as the, the attention goes to the, you know the commotion with the knocking and stuff is happening up there, so that okay. I can shoot them. Okay, you have no bullets. <laughs> no bullets? I didn't remember? reload after the last time. We decided you had no bullets. I remember this because no, 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 you, no, no, you no, offered no. me a devil's bargain in yeah. which I only had one bullet, but I did it really good. I said no one rolled six and killed him. Yeah. 
Yeah, the devil's bargain was that you would shoot, but you would be out of bullets. Yeah, yeah he, he didn't, didn't, didn't take. take he didn't. <laughs> he didn't take the it. bargain. He just rolled really well that time. Uh, so I'll, I'll I like, take your guys' word for it. Yeah. I I remember him taking the bargain, but I'll take your guys' word on that. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe he did. Um, so sure, you could have more bullets. As for what Willie or Oscar would do, is uh, he would like to. Uh, well, one, he'd like not to get stabbed by this man. Um, <laughs> that's probably most important. Uh, two, he'd like to attune to the ghost field to see if there are any, perhaps, you know, re recently deceased trainees that would be willing to fight for him. <laughs> uh, um, the dead bodies, the, the guys you just killed. It hasn't been long enough for their spirits to release yet. What? And it takes a couple days. What? That didn't happen. Long what about the day. guys that we killed in the sewer? Their spirits didn't go anywhere. You guys just possessed their dead bodies. I assumed, their, I assumed that their, <laughs> their bodies had to be empty for a spirit to be injected. Because we also talked about how the spirit wardens were coming soon. I mean, this, Willie could have also possessed her. It just would have been really bad for her. I don't think right. that a body has to be devoid of a spirit to be possessed because that would make possessing a live person impossible. Okay, you're right. So so I, I am incapable of, of attuning to the ghost field with the recently deceased people. Uh, with the ones that you guys have killed, I don't think their spirits have released yet, but you can attempt to see if there's other spirits around. Plus, I, I guess they might not... I mean, why would they help us? I mean, do our... Because he can tell them to. He has commands. Yes. That's true. <laughs> I command you, ghost. <laughs> Fight for me. Kill your friends. A desperate whisperer could try to pull the ghost out with force, says John. Oh. Give yeah, well, I would imagine that Oscar probably doesn't like being held at sword point and feels a little bit desperate. Okay. Yeah, you can you can attempt to forcibly remove a spirit from one of the dead bodies. Like, get over he, here! <laughs> he might. I would imagine he's probably not going to be happy, you know, with anyone. You know, could backfire. But, but my 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 special ability compel does say, force a nearby spirit to appear before you and obey a command you give it. Yep. The kill command. I'm just saying, he's probably going to be upset. He'll That's probably insane. obey you. But he's probably going to be upset. I don't care. So. He's already dead. <laughs> Still fuck you up. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That's what I will do. Reminder, this is not one of your friendly spirits. Therefore, uh, Silas and Wakasis will probably not react well to a spirit appearing. That's fine. <laughs> You can you can make your well, well okay we got to draw the line though between <coughs> a, a spirit being around them and a spirit like directly talking to them or like being like in conflict with them because if, if I'm un incapable of having spirits around any of the party at any point then that kind of like dicks me out of being able to do anything you know you are so, I mean it just upsets us right like well, <laughs> deeply well, like... deeply horrifying <laughs> to see dead people. <laughs> sure, but the, I would the degree, the degree to which the, like, the book describes trauma from uh, ghost-related stuff is pretty extreme, so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or else I'm just stuck, like, I guess I go sit in the corner and wait. Sure, true. Or you actually traumatize us. You make that seems fun. point, sir. I mean, um, I, if I traumatize you every time I do this, this campaign will be over and everyone's character will be dead because of me. And, like, <laughs> I'm dead. Well, you, if you max out on trauma, you take, like ultimate harm yeah so. you have to become like and each another person only thing. has four trauma so yeah we got four more sessions <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're wanting to essentially set precedent and define what for us a close encounter with the spirit or demon means yeah see like i recall um watching the the blood letters campaign and uh oscar uh which is it's funny that both whispers are oscar there uh uh their That's oscar not intentional. no their oscar like when they went in their first their first thing they went to the basement and like while they were fighting they pulled a bunch of ghosts out and had them go fight and that didn't affect uh rc or or canter Hag in any negative way because they weren't like um it, it's not the same as like i i stick a ghost on on what cases versus i stick a ghost on these guys when okay. what cases is around like 
I agree. I also think that this situation is unique in the fact that you're trying to pull a spirit out by force. And like I said, they probably wouldn't react well to that. Uh, okay. I understand what you're saying. So they might be a little bit berserk. They might go after with right. cases. Okay. Right. Yep, I'm I, doing it. I think, I think that for, for that kind of thing, like if you're saying, yeah, I want to try to forcibly pull this spirit out of someone, uh, it is a desperate thing to do. And there's a chance that after you give your, your command to say, hey, go attack that group of guys or that guy, after they've fulfilled that command, then they might decide to turn on your friends. Okay. I do it. Okay. So that's Ask forgiveness, not permission. Oh, yeah. What case this is trying to be behind the dudes so that he can shoot them in the back. And Silas is just going to... Punch. Yes. <laughs> Sil Silas kill. Falcon punch. I, 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 have attuned, I have attuned to the Silas field. Silas kill, please. <laughs> Are All you right. a warg now from Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see how all this goes. So, Matt, yeah. I'll have you roll your attune sure. first. Uh, so okay. you can go ahead and do that. A moment. I roll attune, and I don't add anything to it, right? You don't add anything to it unless you want to push yourself or take a devil's bargain. No, nah, let's do it. Hey, Lamau. You've done it. Just flat out done it. <laughs> so, so the way um, Oscar does this, um, actually, I have to think of a cool flavor reason he does this, or flavor way he does this, because you can't just have him rip it out, right? That'd be dumb. So uh, he actually he he reaches into um, his like his pouch, his little satchel, and he pulls out his his fine lightning hook, which is in general something that is used to like control a spirit. It's, uh, it, uh, I think John, or someone described it as the equivalent of, like, an animal control person having, like, the little wire collars that you can grab from really far away. And he can't see the ghost, and he, he's not in the room, so it's not like he could, like, grab the ghost or anything. But he, like, points it at the ghost and, like, kind of, like, grabs and, like, pulls it out. And, and he, like a wand. yeah. A little bit. It's, like, it's kind of like a, a wand, but also, like, Roadhog. Um, <laughs> and he grabs and pulls him. And so he just like you know get over here and like there's a ghost. Ugh. All right. So what the rest of you see? Oh, I get desperate oh, XP. It, Thanks, yeah, John. Yeah, don't forget desperate XP. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. Uh, so with des desperate XP for rolling a tune, what do I get exactly? I want to make sure I have it right this time. So you're gonna mark uh, your XP tracker for resolve. Okay. Mark, mark one there. I have put a one in there, and I have changed yep. the screen to the break screen. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Which okay. Ghost are so, you what uh, he's getting? It's gonna be one of the ones that Silas murdered uh, in the room. In the you mean all of them? Yeah, the room. Which, which which time? <laughs> in the training room. Cool. What well, cases? So, and, so can I can I one more thing? When when he yeah. pulls him out. He, like, for the moment where he's, like, right next to him to give the command, he just kind of says, You remember the man that killed you? He's, he'll do it again if he makes you. Or if I make him, go kill the other ones. And I, like, let him go. I just, like, get him. Let him okay. loose. So, that is happening pretty much simultaneously with Silas's attack. Mm -hmm. Or maybe shortly after Silas's attack. I just wanted to establish what everyone else is doing uh, before we roll for Silas's murder. All right, Silas, how do you want to murder these guys? Um, I'm just going to straight up go for it uh, right, right gonna, now. Um, going to sandwich this guy's skull. Hopefully the plan will go, I kill this man instantly and then jump on his friends. Yep. Whether or not it goes that way. So there's I mean. him. Directly behind him was uh, Oscar. On either side of Oscar was two thugs. Please don't kill me. And then there's three thugs with Wakasis, is how that's laid out at the moment. Okay. So, we can try to draw it if you guys want. Nah. Right. I'm just going to try to kill the closest ones to me. 
All right. that, that aren't Oscar, right? That are not Oscar. A man. Okay. You can go um, ahead and make... What is a devil's bargain for the situation? Ooh. Let's see. For this, I think... While I'm thinking, you guys can be thinking too, and if you have any ideas that spring to mind, don't hesitate to say so. I have one, but I don't like that one, so I'm not going to say it. You have one, but you don't like it? Okay. Your own devil's bargain. <laughs> well, oh no, I don't want to say it. <laughs> it's potentially pretty bad, so... I mean, you can... I was just going to say, I'm trying not to hit Oscar. I so, see what you're saying. I yeah. see what you're saying. I think that... Let's see. Classic devil's bargains are typically things like uh, taking harm or stress. I don't have any that are coming to mind at the moment. Well, so, I'm going to have to push myself then, unless any someone else has something. I'm busy. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything. <laughs> Sorry. I'm pushing myself. <laughs> Ah, push it. I met. I am one away from trauma. My man. <laughs> I thought you so, wanted that. You wanted that, right? Uh, I wanted that a while ago. <laughs> um. So okay. Um. So let's see how this goes. Skirmish, right? Yes. Yeah. Should be. And yeah. uh, your your objective is to kill this guy and his two friends closest to him. That's correct? yes. That would be the ideal. Uh, All right, this is goal. gonna be yeah. this is risky, you know. Okay. For sure. Okay, so that means if I fail, I can try it from desperate. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling. Oh, three D dice. Ugh. Ooh. Nice. You yeah. almost got a crit there. Yeah, yeah it was close. Close to a crit, but you do do it uh, with without any complications. So cool. Describe the murder of these three gentlemen. Yeah. I think what happens is... So, like I described, <laughs> both of the, essentially, metal fists that Silas has collide on either side of this dude's head, and it just crunches, just down, and he just drops, like, a just a sack, just on the ground. Dead instantly. And, like, he, like, jumps over him, and, like, surprisingly gently, like, pushes Oscar out of the way. Thank you. Like, you you wouldn't expect it to happen that way, but it does. It's almost like, huh. I, it's like, he actually cares about me, I guess, or something like that, so... Which is oh. ironic, since he just murdered three men in front of me and then threatened me, so... Yeah, that's true, you did um, that. Yeah, so, he, like, <laughs> pushes Oscar to the side, and kind of, like, behind him, and then he, like, straight up just punches a dude like a jump punch one falcon, one's guy a falcon punch yeah yeah he just jumps into the air and just slams down with his right hand and it just connects to the dude's like bit neck and just like you hear this crunch and he like screams and he like falls over and the other guy is like so startled that he just kind of like jumps back and silas is there and like just for a brief second this dude just gets a, a like face full of just Silas blood just drenched all on his face and just this wild animalistic grin on it and like I think this is probably the point where he's like I'm dead and then both of like my fists just collide with his chest and go into his body like you, the, Dude, all the bones break around and you're like it. Kalima yeah, yeah essentially like heart. putting like both fists and like smashing this dude's heart between them like the dude's head back there that's gross. And then he just drops, and the other guy's, like, on the ground screaming in pain, and then I just walk up and, like, put a boot on his neck and just snap it. Emily, you're making the same face now that you were in your thumbnail last week, and it's really know, this... funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a face that I like, make a lot. This is my default what, what the fuck. <laughs> That's great. Right. So, that happens, and... Obviously, and unsurprisingly, the three guys that were uh, with Wakasis, they immediately attempt to jump into action. <laughs> Two of them are going to 
attempt to try and go get Silas. The other one is going to turn and face Wakasis. But Wakasis, you positioned yourself to try and take advantage of this moment of surprise. So you're going to have uh, a chance to, to act before they can. Uh, yeah, so I guess two of them probably standing kind of closer to the the scene and they you know go forward and the guy that's you know i was probably showing the papers to is right next to me i want to you know like throw him in his face and like pull my knife and stab him in the gut <laughs> classic cool. yeah I love this. um right. so what role would that be i need to actually pull up my could be skirmish yeah yeah i think so I will roll skirmish. All right. Skin down and dirty. Silas likes it. Ooh, wait, how? That that doesn't make any sense. You uh, you rolled you rolled zero plus zero on, on a d six of no no d's. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled a grand whopping nothing. It's magic. I loved, I I loved it, it when you rolled like all your dice. You're like, <laughs> it, it just disappeared. <laughs> It's Wait, what? <laughs> what is what is your skirmish at? What? It's zero. Oh, so I, I found so that when rolling a zero, you had to just basically roll two d six. Yeah, and then just take the lowest. Take the yeah. Okay. You can push yourself or take a Dell's bargain. You can roll one instead of two and taking the lowest. Just saying. Mm, do you, do you have a devil's bargain in mind for this? You, you get you get my documents dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> it works <laughs> I'd say a good devil's bargain for this one would be that your knife gets stuck in this guy's ribcage and you don't have it for the rest of the fight yeah I take that definitely <laughs> 100% I so, so now I, I have a rules question with this um, if he if he fails on this, that just happens regardless, right? Like the devil's bargain is just going to happen because he got the the boost, right? Yeah, the devil's bargain happens regardless. Okay, cool. I didn't know if that was something where like, well, you did it, so I guess it doesn't happen. But that makes more sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do I? I put two in the extra versus the instead of the skill. Uh, yeah. Basically, now yeah. you're just gonna be rolling one d six and taking the highest. Uh, so just one. Then? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. There okay. should be a. a Input value uh, after yeah. the roll. Ooh. Oh, what? you got the <laughs> double blood, Anthony. Nice. <laughs> All crits, baby. <laughs> Dang. Well done, friends. Wow. <laughs> All right. So describe this stab for us, please. Um, so I like to think of it. I, I relish the stabbing. You know, it's a it's quite a flourish on the paper throw. So there's there's some a nice even keel to my toss. The papers splay about his face, and he's you know <laughs> stunned by my deception. He gets a paper cut across the cheek. Ow! <laughs> and it's it, it's pretty smooth. Like me pulling the knife out <laughs> is the same motion of winding up, and it like goes in, and then there's a, a herky jerky like right into his body. Like it stops on his sternum, and then in. And he yeah. goes, eh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Emily and I watched the VODs from uh, last week. <laughs> and uh, and we did that a couple times. <laughs> Someone would die, but uh, I'm dead. Yep. Okay. So, um, Lyric, in what glorious fashion would you like to enter the scene at this time? That is a good question. So did, did we actually decide in the chat how Willie was going to... Wh is he coming back with me? Yeah. I assume he is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... So he it's, led it's you my, back through yeah, the sewer. It's my assumption that Willie would have been like, all right, time to get on your feet. We got to go back there. Like, maybe there's a sort of, like, moment where Willie senses that Oscar's in, in trouble. And he's like, yeah. my brother senses are tingling. Guys... It's Brother's Day, <laughs> by the way. Happy Brother's Day to all the brothers out there. And, uh... Um, anyway, and he has his brother since his tingle, and he's like, mm -hmm. Lyric, you should get on your feet. It's time to head back into into this. You can redeem yourself later. Come on. Follow me. Yep. All right. So, hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I'm trying to think of you, where it would make sense Yeah, just to, to give enter. you an idea, 
if you are entering through the sewer, then you'd be entering through this side of the room here. If you're looking at roll twenty, why I'm pinging. Okay. Through. Can you can you ping That's... it one more time? Yep. Oh, ping. Can... There it is. Oop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. And let's see. Okay, so I see the safe and. Uh... Yep. You have... And then. So you're just entering the room, Oscar, or off opposite of Silas. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Oscar is more like over here, and Silas is also like right in the door, and there's some dead bodies around. Around. Okay. There, you know. All right. So I would be just coming in other side of the room, essentially busting yeah. in. Yeah. I'm okay. Gonna... Oh, oops! Turn my mic. It sounded up too much. <laughs> you can. Enter in whatever dramatic fashion you like within reason. So, okay. Um, how many guys are still left standing at this point? Two. Those. Okay. No. After all of the the murderousness, two guys. All the past. Okay. Taken out three, and Wakasis just took out one. There's two okay. left. Cool. Um. And well. Oscar summoned a ghost. He but did! I did it! <laughs> oh yeah, the ghost is going to be doing some stuff. Oh, I yeah. forgot about that. Oh, that's right! Oh yeah! <laughs> huh, about that. Um, Everyone's dead, so it attacks you instead. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So, just to give mm. Lyric a better idea about what she sees when she walks into the scene, uh, Wakasis is standing over a dead body, his knife in his chest, ribcage area. Yes. Silas is... Even more covered in blood, probably <laughs> standing over someone breathing extremely heavily. Heavy mm -hmm. breathing. And Oscar, whereabouts would you say you are? Um, I'd like to believe that when Silas kind of pushed me out of the way, like lightly, it still knocked me off balance enough that where I, like I fell down on my butt um, because I'm just unstable, and you know any motion that puts me side to side that is not my own would do that not it wasn't like a like i'm falling and landing on my butt super hard but it's more of like a, i get tips, tipsy and like land on my butt yep. um and <clears throat> he's just watching this ghost yep so the ghost he like you sent him off to do his bidding mm -hmm. and he turns to face the two remaining red sashes and he kind of like appears to get bigger suddenly like bigger than a, a normal person would be and he just shrieks at these two red sashes he goes oh, boogity, and, boogity, boogity. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> and they flip their shit and <laughs> they're gonna try to peace out and run they're gonna end up running past Orcasis and lyric but they are too freaked the heck out from this ghost to even care and so they're gonna be trying to book it and the ghost is gonna, you know, try to screw one of them up. Uh, okay. But Ly lyric, okay. you have a chance to to do something if you want. Yeah, I figure um, at the point that the guys go sprinting across the room, you know, pissing themselves or whatever, I just like I, I just want to throw open the door and like take my pistol, pop one of them in the noggin. All right. Nice and, and clean. Let's see. Well, clean. <laughs> Clean comparatively, y'all. Yeah, yeah, true. We just saw some, some also, dastardly if anyone, stuff. If anyone else wants to try to take advantage of these two guys trying to run away, you you have a chance to do that. Uh, I don't want to try to fall into the trap of one person at a time. But I, I think always I, do. <laughs> I think Silas actually wouldn't do that because he's like, oh, lyrics here. And Wakasis has got this. And so he, like, turns around and he walks over to Oscar. And he, like, puts out his hand, which is all covered in blood from punching a dude's heart. So he, like, puts out his hand and he, like, offers him, like, a hand to get up off the ground. Um, I, I accept the hand. And as I, like, as he's walking over, he'll see me digging in my bag. And as he goes to pick me up, uh, he, he, I grab his hand, but he'll notice that there's something in my hand. It's a small glass vial. Mm. I kind of like, I like, I like pick him up and then like pat him on the back and I kind of like, I mean, please don't. When I let go, 
No, no, no. It's like a light, gentle pat, and yeah. all the like, like so you now have red palm prints on the yeah. back of your hand. It's a good thing the uniform's back. red. So. Yeah. Um, yeah right. And then I kind of go like, I move my hand away, and like, are you giving me this vial or? I, I say, is it, like, just in your hand. It's it's in your hand now. Like it's it's like a you know when when like you do uh, when you mow the lawn for grandma and she like slips a twenty in your palm and you're like oh, yeah grandma it's like that <laughs> okay right I'll look at it um Matt <clears throat> yeah do you want to break before or after lyrics roll to try and shoot this guy let's let's let her do the roll All right, let me then, do and it and then we'll we'll take a break that would typically be hunt to shoot yeah. Him. And I am better at hunt than skirmish, nice. <laughs> so that would be that would be pleasant. All righty, let's Any go to one. Devil's bargain or push yourself is still available. Um, I think I'm just gonna go for it. You know, there's there's another ghostly fellow in here. If something goes wrong, then he can back me up. <laughs> Do I need to tweak anything with the input value, or is that still just uh, nope? Right? Okay, nope. cool. Technically Semi a success. success. Technically yeah. a success. <laughs> that's that's my favorite thing. It's like, oh, <laughs> my bullet goes in his body in a location. Okay. So let's see. That for for you, you weren't. Was that a controlled thing or? I think it would have been. Okay. Unless anyone thinks differently, because so was... it's it's controlled, risky, desperate. Yeah. Okay. Then mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say it was controlled. I would say that since she just appeared out of nowhere and said, right, and they're terrified. <laughs> I just bust in. They wouldn't have seen me coming. Yeah. You exploit a dominant advantage is one of the things that determines the controlled state. Yeah. So you or you do it. Takes extra time. Reduced effect. Suffer lesser harm, or you end up in a risky position. So, let's see. I imagine that Lyric might still be shaken up a little bit from her mm -hmm. previous things. So, so my maybe... hand might not be as steady as it would sure. normally be. I'm just trying to sure. brainstorm. I, I think that reduced effect makes sense here. Yeah. You know? So you're not going to quite completely kill him. You're going to knock him on his ass, though. Yeah. And so you shoot him, and it, it hits him square in the chest... But uh, he he had maybe uh, some some metal chest plate on or something like that, and so it hits him, doesn't quite penetrate, and it knocks him on his butt, and the ghost takes that advantage and just leaps on top of him, and there's I was gonna this, say <laughs> there's this swirl and flurry of bright white light and mist, and you hear screaming, and it's it's a bloody mess. It's a freaking bloody mess, man. This ghost is tearing the sky apart, and he he has died. <laughs> Icky. Uh, <laughs> the other one who was running, he he keeps running, and uh, he's gonna attempt to clock you in the face though on his way past lyric. So oh, see, I thought that the I thought that the ghost was going for one guy and and. I guess I was assuming that he got him, but I, I guess he could have diverted... The there ghost was, could have diverted its attention. There was two running. You right. shot one of them, and the ghost <laughs> leapt at the one that you shot. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and so that left one still running, and he's going to try to sock you across the face as he runs mm -hmm. past. Uh, you can roll to resist getting punched in the face if you want. or you can. I just would probably punched. like to resist that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? If... If at all possible. <laughs> so, let's see. Reminding myself about how resistance rules work. Yes, One C for each attribute dot. Okay, six stress minus the highest die result. So for you, that's going to be... C. Minus the highest dot? Is that what it said? Yeah. It Well, so what happened... Yeah. I'm just trying to... Uh, so, she rolls dice three, that is equal right? to... So, so it's equal to the resistance rating, right? Right. Um, so, she has two insight, one prowess, mm -hmm. and three resolve. Okay. So, right. you roll that many dice, and then you... You take... You, like, 
have six minus the highest of the dice roll there. Right. All right. So that's going to be three dice then. Yeah. Okay. You can roll three d sixes to resist this, and then we're going to take our break. Okay. Cool. Uh, 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 uh. Remind me how to do that. It has been a really long yeah, time. Yeah. Just since just I've type actually... slash roll and then space and then the number three, the letter D, and then mm -hmm. the number six. Cool. Yikes. Two. Ooh. All right, so you're going to take four stress to resist getting punched in the face. Oh, <laughs> wow. oh but you no. didn't get punched in the face. <laughs> Go ahead and take your four stress. Wow, I am very stressed right now. I am, not... I am two away from trauma. <laughs> I am nice. one away, so this is a so, fun fight. Three away. You know, you're able to, or I'll let you describe uh, how you resist this. There's, there's a couple ways that can work. You can either say, I resist it by just toughing through it, you know, I get punched in the face, but I don't give a I damn. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> or you can, like, whoosh, dodge out the way. You know, it's I would all say... Like hmm. I like to imagine that, like, she totally gets socked in the face, but, like, she's so rattled right now that, like, nothing, nothing else can, can phase her further at this point. Okay. So... Yeah, mentally, she's definitely in a way worse spot, but she's just kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah. don't matter. He takes that cheap shot, and he keeps on running. Uh, we're going to take our first break here, I think. Yeah, we will do that. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys are having a good time. This is the fourth week of our time with Blades in the Dark, and every time we get to play, it's a little bit more fun. Um, it's a really good time to, to, uh, to play a fun role-playing game that doesn't really fall into a lot of the same conventions as most uh, role-playing games. Um, one thing you might notice is that we are kind of learning as we go. Um, if you have played the game before or if you are curious about the game, this is a great place to, to come and hang out and either tell us what you're doing or, um, or you know, learn about what we're doing. Uh, John uh, Harper, the, the person who makes the game, uh, he oftentimes hangs out in the chat. Um, and you can check out uh, the Blades in the Dark early access PDF where we get all our rules right there. I just posted the link in the chat. It's really cool. Totally worth the money. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And thanks for the follow, Jay Morris, 88, and Abe Rimmer. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And uh, we'll be back in about five minutes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>